when worlds collide. Now you'll remember that Hernan Cortez, the Spanish conquistador, is now on the island of Cuba. He sinks his ship so that none of his crew can leave him, and plans on keeping all the gold he finds to himself and not send it back to Spain. He notices that there is a strong and wealthy civilization to the west and wants to learn more. The leader of this civilization, Moctezuma II, was the son of an emperor. However, he wasn't just guaranteed the job. He was a great soldier, winning 43 battles against enemy nations. Therefore, he became chosen to become emperor by the Council of Nobles. Moctezuma too had noticed the mysterious strangers off the coast and had a big decision to make. Should he welcome them into the empire, or should he send an army against them? In the end, Moctezuma sent Aztecs to greet the strangers, bring them gifts, and direct them to Tenochtitlan. On their way towards the city, Cortes and his men met with the various tribes outside the city, many of whom were enemies of the Aztecs. It is here that he met Malinche. She was once an Aztec noble who had been sold into slavery when her father died. Cortes realized that she would be the key to conquering the Aztec Empire. She could speak Nahuatl, the Aztec language, and quickly learn Spanish as well, and therefore was able to translate for the conquistador. She is often depicted as having two faces, or being two-faced. Arriving in Tenochtitlan, the Spanish put Moctezuma under house arrest, and the city was looted for its gold. The Aztec citizens were in uproar. Cortes forced Moctezuma to speak to his people, hoping he could calm them down. However, in anger, they threw rocks at the emperor. To this day, it is unknown if Moctezuma died at the hands of the Spanish or of his own people. With their emperor dead, the Aztecs went ahead into battle with the Spanish. Both the Aztecs and the Spanish had powerful weapons of war, but they were not evenly matched. The Aztecs had weapons made of wood and obsidian, a type of volcanic rock that includes spears and clubs. Conversely, the Spanish had weapons made of steel, never before seen by the Aztecs. These included swords and muskets, along with horses. However, the most impactful weapon the Spanish had was that of disease. The Aztecs did not have immunity to the smallpox disease brought over by the Spanish, and in the end, over 90% of their population would succumb to the pain and hunger it caused. Therefore, despite largely outnumbering the Spanish in battle, the city and the empire fell to the Spanish. The intercultural contact between the Aztec and the Spanish changed the Aztec worldview in many ways, specifically in its religion, economy, society, and ultimate desire for independence. The Aztecs felt like their gods had abandoned them. Otherwise, how could this have happened? Priests and missionaries were sent from Spain to help convert the remaining Aztecs to Catholicism. In order to convert the Aztecs, it was believed that all symbols of their former religion needed to be destroyed, including their sacred calendars and temples. Spanish settlers enacted the encomienda system. Spanish settlers would come to the new colony and receive a piece of land along with some Aztec workers. The landowners were supposed to treat them well and educate them in the Christian religion. However, many were horribly abused, and the Aztecs had no access to wealth. Therefore, all Aztecs were now at the bottom of the social hierarchy, despite where they may have fit before. However, some Spaniards did marry Aztec women. Their children were called mestizo, and would eventually make up the majority of Mexico's population. A steady flow of gold was required to be sent back to Spain from the new colony. However, both the Aztecs and the Spanish settlers realized that what was good for Spain wasn't necessarily good for them too. Discontent grew between both groups, and in 1821, Mexico became independent from Spain. Today, you can see the influence of both the Aztec and Spanish in Mexican culture.